the harrying of the North. As the dust settled after the Battle of Hastings in October 1066, England was without a king. King Harold lay dead and William of Normandy, victor of the battle, moved swiftly to secure his crown. On Christmas Day 1066, in an Anglo-Saxon ceremony performed by an Anglo-Saxon bishop in the English language, William became King of England. This new French-speaking king made every attempt to be seen as the legitimate heir to Edward the Confessor and the rightful king over all of the Saxon people. He made a promise told in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that he would rule all this people as well as the best of the kings before him if they would be loyal to him. Yet this was not to be. William had seized the lands of Harold's supporters and handed them out to his own Norman followers. Only a slim proportion of the land remained in Anglo-Saxon hands, disinheriting many and replacing the nobility with a distinctly foreign element. Additionally, William's rule was harsh and determined, and fearing both foreign invasion and rebellion, quickly began the construction of imposing Norman Mott and Bailey castles in every major town up and down the country, off the backs of forced labour from the local English population. This combination of social uprooting and harsh treatment led to rebellions that William was, was to put down brutally, with the most notable example remembered as the harrying of the North. William's fear of rebellion and foreign invasion came true when Edgar the Atheling, great nephew of Edward the Confessor, enlisted the aid of Saxon rebels, Scottish allies and invading Danes to lead a rebellion that successfully captured Northumbria and York by 1069. Incensed by the rebel murder of William's newly appointed Earl of York, Robert de Comines, William personally rode up north with a large army to put an end to the uprising and all of the uprisings to come once and for all. He defeated the rebel army at York and paid the Danes to leave. Then, to ensure no other rebel army could be raised by this land again, William commanded that all that would sustain the people be seized and burned, killing farm stock, destroying food supplies and seeds for future crops, and any tools that they could lay their hands upon. Anyone refusing to submit was murdered while the harrying laid waste to the countryside and the lives of the innocent and the guilty alike, resulting in the terrible famine that saw the starving forced to eat their own. Even submitting brought little mercy as, as 100,000 people or more died from starvation in the months following. Approximately 75% of the local population perished. The dead and dying littered the highways as they fled the famines, presumably watched over with little pity by their new Norman overlords, secure in their newly built Norman castles. At great cost to the local population, William had succeeded in quelling this rebellion and the North was never again able to challenge his reign. William had secured England. The brutality of this event was, is still seared in the consciousness of the North, even today. And in a way, it set the precedent for the modern North-South cultural and economic divide 